All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to interview Manan Sharma, who has been a research fellow at Microsoft as well as Google, and is now starting his master's degree at Carnegie Mellon University. So let's get started. Second hey, yes. Manan. Hey, Paul. Finally, hey. we're here. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. Yes. So good to meet you in person. I'm uh, super excited for this. Yeah, I mean, I've been looking over your LinkedIn. It looks super cool. You got like a ton of good experience. And I just wanted to ask you about it a little bit. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah. So tell me a little bit about your research experience in the industry, because that's something I've actually never heard about. Like you're working as a research fellow at Microsoft. I saw that as well as like a pre-doctoral researcher at Google. So maybe you could tell me some more about kind of those roles you had. Right. Um. So just a hands up, both of these roles were when I was back in India. So maybe okay. uh, I can just start about the Microsoft Research first. Uh, so the research fellow role in Microsoft Research India, it's designed for the fresh graduates, like both from the undergrad or uh, the master's program, the fresh graduates from those okay. uh, with an interest towards a PhD. But then these programs are designed to give you a flair of what a PhD program might look like. But it also allows you to experience your research impact in industry. Uh, so that's what the role was about. So it comes with a contract of one or two years uh, that you can stay in MSR, Microsoft Research, for one or two years. And then uh, it uh, it helps you build clarity on whether you are indeed interested for going for a PhD or uh, so it the programs the program was immensely helpful for me uh, because I number one like it was my first industry research experience. And uh, the lab was amazing. The research scientists that I used to meet there, they were all very experienced in their, uh, and very well known in their uh, domain as well. So I got to know a lot of a uh, lot a lot about the happening research, uh, in like different domains, not just AI. So good thing about uh, so a very interesting thing about Microsoft Research is that they didn't just focus on machine learning. They had another. They had they had research going on in multiple domains of computer science say theoretical computer science systems research there was a whole network networks groups that used to re, uh, used to conduct research on networks so that way i mean uh, i never like i was totally unaware of the research going on in these domains and it was in microsoft research where i got to know okay uh, okay this is the kind of research that happens in the other areas as well Gotcha. Yeah, your Microsoft Research says it was in machine learning and the AI group at Microsoft Research. Yeah. Oh, wow. So what did you do there? Like, what kind of research did you focus on during your time? Uh, so my group used to work in... So when I was in Microsoft Research, I worked on graph neural networks specifically. We were trying to, uh, we were trying to build graph-based models for different uh, various scenarios. For example, we worked on, uh, there's a problem within the graphs called node classification. You have a node and you have to classify it with, uh, with one of the labels in the label set. We also okay. worked on graph neural networks for recommendation problems. Okay, that's actually really cool. And uh, yeah, for, for someone trying to get started, I guess, like let's say they have, I don't know, maybe an undergraduate degree in computer science. They're kind of on the fence about, do they want to do PhD or do they want to do software engineering or something like that, like what would your advice be for that person to get started as a research engineer? Okay, uh, so um, assuming that person hasn't yet completed their undergrad, so my mm -hmm. first, first point of advice would be to engage yourself in research. Even though you have absolutely no idea about the domain, uh, it's a very good idea to uh, be get yourself involved hands-on in that research domain, experience it yourself, get a flavor of what the research might be in industry or academia as a PhD student. Mm -hmm. And uh, so advice number one, advice number two is to network a lot. Uh, okay. Talk to a lot of PhD students, researchers, mm -hmm. email them, read papers a lot. So whenever you read papers, uh, you read a research paper, at the end of it, you have few doubts. For example, uh, the authors did, that and I mean this idea looks very novel but then how did they even come up with an idea because yeah. it doesn't look very trivial it works <laughs> extremely well but then how why is it working yeah. well so yeah. I I used to do that like I have I simply just uh, like the the research papers came with the author's email as well I used to just email oh, so uh, 
कि आई रेड योर पेपर इट वॉज अमेजिंग एंड आई वॉज वंडरिंग हाउ यू केम अपट आई इट लुक सिमिलर टू दैट प्रीवियस रिसर्च पेपर विद आई वॉन्टेड टू नो योर थॉट प्रोसेस सो वेन यू इंट्रैक्ट लॉट दैट हेल्प्स द अदर थिंग दैट हेल्प मी वॉज अटेंडिंग कॉन्फिडेंसेज आई हैव ओनली अटेंडेड वन फिजिकल कॉन्फिडेंस टिल नाउ बट अ फ्यू कॉन्फ्रेंसेज इन दी ऑनलाइन मोड ड्यूरिंग कोविड एज वेल एंड I mean, of course, ah, uh, the social interactions are very limited when in the online setting. But the one offline experience that I had, I met ah uh, various like I got to know so much about different areas other than mine, and I met yeah. I met a lot of people in, and and in various different positions from industry to academia, showcasing their research, interacting with them. Why do they yeah. think their idea is well valuable for their their own domain in industry, etc. So. Gotcha. Yeah. So conferences, attending conferences is just the extension of the networking advice. Yeah, that's actually really good advice. You can read their papers. Their emails are always listed, and you just reach out to them, right? You just send them an email and say like, "Hey, liked your paper. I thought that was awesome. Like, I had a question about this." And so that seems to be working for you. I mean, you have a ton of great experience now. I'll take it. Um, that's awesome. So, okay, and then. Let's say you've done some networking. You got some people to reply to you. You got some contacts in the network, like in the research field. Like, how did you go about applying to the job for like a research position? For me, like, on, like speaking only about my case, I found the opening via a friend. So the research fellow, for, for example, I seek like I sequentially applied to first for Microsoft Research and then for the role of Google Research, and uh, so the application process for these. was kind of similar to the university application procedure you apply on the portal but uh, then you also have to write an essay a statement of purpose as to why you are interested in these programs and it typically follows uh, uh, and it also includes you attaching some letter of references so okay. at least the research fellow programs application was similar to that i applied on the portal but uh, other than that uh, it's it's very very strongly recommended that you also reach out to the researchers of your interest in these programs have a conversation with schedule a conversation with them uh at the like try to find the mute grounds of mutual interest as to what are the fields the researcher is the researchers group is working on and where you can contribute that also i mean it's it uh, i mean it's a bidirectional helpful yeah. scenario it's mutually helpful in the way that the researcher understands as to where what the students areas of interest areas of expertise are where his skill set lies and it also it's also helpful for you in the sense that you get to see the kind of research that you will do so you will get a flavor it won't be immediately surprising after joining ki what environment yeah. is it you will you'll get an <laughs> idea as to where you would be working what kind of uh, skills that i can hope to develop when i'm in that role Okay. So okay. That's uh, that's how my application looks really... like for Microsoft. So yeah, that's a really good advice because it does make sense. You don't want to be surprised the first day, like oh, I have no idea what this topic okay. is. Like yeah, you want to make sure that you talk to the right people. And it looks like when you apply, you can attach some letters of recommendation, um, and it's like kind of like a university type right. application almost. Okay. And the best thing about academia was that people are always ready to help. I mean, whenever you reach out to someone. <laughs> barring the time this barring the bandwidth issues people are always helpful to chat they will be very very happy to tell you more about their work more about what they want to do more about their immediate mm. goals the paper let's actually, say some idea that they've been working on so it's very easy to strike conversations there and yes. people are very helpful so you can expect to get help in uh, multiple ways possible yeah no that's actually really cool actually like the academia world i feel like is very open they're like excited to talk about the ideas they have and working on so that's refreshing cuz yeah sometimes software engineering you can get more busy kind of like we have a goal we just need to meet it uh everything else right now is just like we're ignoring so that sounds really nice to be able to talk to these like researchers about their work and stuff and so after microsoft you went next to google research is that right That's right. Okay, and so what kind of research did you do there at Google? Uh, in Google, I was in the uh, Earth Observation Sciences group, and we worked on solving climate-related issues using computer vision. So it was again a new domain for me because I didn't had any prior uh, research experience in computer vision. So again, a new role for me. But then I had an I had a background in civil engineering, so I did know something about hydrology. 
and hydrology oh. hydrometeorology all of these are very much applicable in the climate domains there are so many problems that oh. uh, uh that are that's uh, that have these fields to their core so okay. uh, that kind of worked out for me in, uh, for me in getting into google because i i had research experience in microsoft and other research labs and domain was new for me because i haven't i hadn't worked in climate and i hadn't researched on computer vision so that looked like a very exciting opportunity for me to build skills in that domain so that uh, so that was my, my work summary so far we built so we used to gather satellite imageries uh, uh, uh -huh. and then using the multiple spectrums of those satellite imageries can be uh can we use can from that image can we infer anything about the earth's landmass or any other uh, uh meteorological variable involved so that was my uh, research in google that's Somebody. actually that sounds really cool <laughs> man that's like awesome that's like it's like science it's like in a movie you know they have those scenes of like satellite images and analyze that's actually really cool it sounds awesome okay cool and then and you've had like full-time work experience at Microsoft too, as like an engineer, right? Yep. Uh, so um, not a software engineer. I was an applied okay. scientist at Microsoft, but that with okay. uh, the boundaries between an applied scientist and a software engineer is kind of blurry. So you kind of pour <laughs> into both the territories at once. I'm sure gotcha. you know about that. So. Yeah. yeah. Some, sometimes I just have to, yeah, sometimes I deal with data and I'm like very novice. I don't know a lot, but it feels like, okay, I have to figure out some trends, got to find some patterns here, got to figure out what the overall picture is. But yeah, that's actually really cool. So like for applied scientists, like what kind of work would you do? Like what kind of work do you do as like an applied scientist? Uh, so when I was back in Microsoft, so I joined, uh, again, uh, Paul, so I'm no longer in Microsoft right now. So when okay. I was in Microsoft, so I used, I was in the Bing Ads organization. Okay. And uh, in Bing Ads, I used to handle, there's a group of ads called dynamic search ads. Uh, so I used to handle problems related to dynamic search ads for the non-US and Canada markets. Um, mm -hmm. The problems could vary from generation to their ranking and selection mechanism as to like how can we select good ads based on the user queries that are coming in from Bing. Uh, so yeah, that was a quick summary of my work there. Gotcha. Yeah, sorry about that. I see. I saw your latest post that you're gonna be doing a master's degree, right, at Carnegie Mellon University, right? Man, congratulations! That's huge. That is so cool, man. I'm so happy for you. Um, Thank you so that's much. That's exciting. Yeah. So, when do you start? I it's I'm already in the third week of my classes now. Oh, so I've nice. started already. That's so, <laughs> so cool. it was uh last week of August when uh, okay uh, the classes started. Gotcha. Nice. That's awesome. You already got your, you already are starting the program. You got your feet wet getting. Okay. Nice. So that will go see, I just see here on your LinkedIn. It'll go till December of next year. Okay. So you got like That's right. a year and a half about left. Very cool. And is there any particular topic you're focusing on at this master's degree? Um, That's a very good question. I am an, uh, so right now I, again, as I said, I interacted with quite a lot of professors here uh, mm. both from the research areas I have I had experience in and the areas I had no experience in gotcha, uh, gotcha. and there were, I got to know about so many interesting problems as where I can work in and potentially build my skills there so while I haven't finalized one particular area that I'll be working on but uh, I think I'll probably work uh, I'll probably conduct research in the direction of uh, reinforcement learning specifically the uh, multi-agent one uh, okay. I had again a very new area for me, so yeah. kind of excited for that. Nice. Well, thank you so much, Manon. It's really great to meet you. Thanks for taking the time to answer these questions. Um, I'll leave your link in the description below if anyone wants to reach out to you and hopefully, you know, make, grow your network if you want. Um, but also, if you want to take a minute to give a shout out to anything you're working on or kind of get the word out on any projects you want, like people to know about or maybe you could just leave a message as well you can the stage is yours for like a minute or two uh -huh. uh it's just that i i'm not yet actively working on a research project right now i'm about to start on one all of my okay. previous tracks just culminated so i'm kind gotcha. of in a uh, kind of in a twilight zone right now before the uh, research yeah. kicks off again so nice. yes enjoying that time till uh i'm back to research so awesome 
Nice. Yeah. Well, congratulations again. Thank you so much for taking the time. I really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah. Um, Sounds good. Uh, nice meeting you, Paul, as well. And uh, yeah. I'm happy to take any other questions. Uh, all and then guys, real quick, if you want to schedule some one-on-one -on -one time with me to go over your resume, do a mock interview, one that is a Microsoft tier interview, that one that I would do at Microsoft because I interview people there for my job, go to the link in the description below to get set up. Basically, I want to help you succeed, help you find that job, especially if you're also looking into the OMSES, I can answer your questions one-on-one -on -one about that or even help you with your homework if you're stuck on something, let me know. Thank you so much.